Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and in this episode of C++ Crash Course we're going to be talking about timing and how we can profile bits of our code. So in this case we'll look at timing.cpp and we're going to be using Chrono. So from Chrono we're going to be using uh, these high resolution clocks that are part of the uh, C++11 standard. And so these high resolution clocks give us to the clocks in the system with the uh, the shortest time period. So they're basically the most high resolution clocks that we can get access to. Now this is going to change system to system, so it's implementation dependent. So uh, I went ahead and made a quick helper function, and this will just you know kind of clean up our code uh, inside of our main function. But all that this does is from standard chrono, so we're going to go ahead and use the namespace here, just because these names get rather long. As you can see, we have you know high resolution clock and then time point. Now, if we didn't have this namespace, it would be standard chrono, high resolution clock, time point. So we want to kind of cut down the size as much as we can in this case, just for clarity. So in this case, it will return high resolution clock and then a call to now. So now we'll just return uh, the current count in that timer. So in order to get an actual timing, all we need to do is call this function twice, one before something that we want to profile. In this case, we're profiling uh, simple vector addition, so adding two vectors together, uh, one element at a time. And in this case, the vectors are 2 to the 25 uh, elements in length each, and it stores to another 2 to the 25 um, array. And so we call, you know, begin and end, and we just go ahead and use auto types just for, you know, the sake of convenience. And we like to show off different parts of the C11 standard that we've seen before. So you know, as of this point, we have a time point, right? So this returns, it doesn't return seconds, it doesn't return milliseconds, it returns a time point. So in order to turn the time point into something that makes sense or something that is uh, uh, that, it, that is understandable to us, uh, we go ahead and cast it as something. So when we go ahead and do this duration cast, and in this case we cast it as a double, this will go ahead and cast whatever we're doing as uh, seconds. So in this case, we're doing end minus begin. So this is just you know the duration uh, you know between end and begin. And this will give us a value in seconds. Now, if we wanted something other than seconds, we could, of course, change this. If we wanted nanoseconds, if we wanted milliseconds, uh, we'll go ahead and show that in just a bit. And so we go ahead and just print out uh, span.count, and that will give us uh, the count in seconds between uh, that it took for that uh, between those two measurements of end and begin. So before we go ahead and look at how to change this into a different, uh, if we want to change it to say milliseconds instead of seconds, let's go ahead and just compile it using G++ O timing, timing with CPP, and we'll run it. So right here it says that the elapsed time took uh, 0.12 seconds for that for loop. Right, and so if we want to change this to say uh, milliseconds, then you have to remember that we're not guaranteed to get the exact time out when you run this code again, so it will be within some margin of error. But all we need to do is convert this uh, to milli, right? So milli is something that's predefined, so this would be you know standard milli if we wanted to do that. But because we're using namespace standard, we can just use milli. And we'll go ahead and change uh, our printout to reflect milliseconds as well. All right. So we'll go ahead and compile this with G++ again, and we'll go ahead and run timing. So it's going to be a little bit different, but as you can see, instead of being, you know, 0 0.121071 seconds, now it's 129 seconds. And likewise, we can, you know, we can move this up even more and say, well, what is it in nanoseconds? All right, and so we'll say ns down here, and we'll go ahead and recompile, and we'll run it. So now we get a very big number because we're starting to get into uh, uh you know, of course, we're moving down and down and down. So we skip past microseconds and we went all the way to nanoseconds. And so we're going to get, you know, in this case, 1.267, uh, 64 times 10 to the 8th nanoseconds, which, you know, is going to be around 0. Uh, 0.12, you know, 67, 64 uh, seconds or 126.764 milliseconds. But this is an easy way that you can use if you have some kind of function you want to profile. Uh, you can just profile you know, before and after that function call to see how long it took. Um, and then when it comes to, um, you know, if you're trying to prof profile something that's, you know, in MPI or profile something that's in pthreads, you know, a lot of times, you know, you don't necessarily have to use, you know, the 
the profiling tools that are part of the C++11 standard, so this is just more general advice, a lot of times, you know, specific libraries like pthreads, it'll have its own profiling tools you can use. But if we just have some general C++ code that we want to profile using something like uh, the high resolution clock within Chrono can be a good way to profile things. That's going to do things for uh, that's going to do it for this video. As always, all this code can be found on github.com slash coffee before arch. So, you know, if you're interested in GPU programming or C++ programming or parallel programming in C++, so if you're interested in things like MPI and P threads, I've got a series on that here that we've got, you know, implementations of algorithms as well as, you know, just the basics of parallel programming. But in here, we looked at C++ Crash Course, and it's going to be within the standard library. And we should go ahead and push this code. So let's go ahead and remove our executable. We'll add it. We'll commit it. Add timing example. And we'll push it. And there we have it. So now if we go back to here and we reload, we see we've got a uh, chrono. So feel free to download this example. You know, even if you want to just copy this function out and use it, uh, you know, in your own code, feel free to do that as well. Uh, you know, this can be an easy way if you just want to, you know, go, you know, how long is this function taking or, you know, kind of get guidance of where is the, where are the bottlenecks in my program? You know, doing things like this can be a, you know, a quick way of, you know, trying to figure out those points. But like I said, that's going to do it for this video. I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.